Wednesday, March 27th, 2024, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So, today we're going to look at whether the U.S. could follow in the U U.K.'s footsteps. Yes, that might, might sound strange. M many people think the U.S. Lead, uh, leads the world, right? Economically, socially, politically. But the head of the Congressional Budget Office has just warned uh, a day or two ago that uh, the U.S. faces a Liz Truss-style market shock as that source. So, yes, that's the head of the CBO, and I think that's fairly significant for, for him to say that. We're also going to look at uh, the debt, of course, because it is, but also we're going to look at inflation, and we're going to look at what Reagan said about inflation and the debt, and unfortunately... Uh, there's the old saying, you know, uh, watch what someone does, not what someone says. And uh, I, I think uh, Reagan was honest and sincere about what he thought. But uh, I'm going to give you my opinion why he didn't and why any president right now probably wouldn't either. Uh, wouldn't uh, follow his or her uh opinion about things like inflation. So there is a historical precedent for uh, the U.S. following the U.K. financially. Uh, the first one in the last hundred years or so is back in uh, the early 30s. The UK had a major uh, crisis in 1931. Uh, it had gone back on the gold standard under Chancellor Churchill, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Winston Churchill. Uh, yes, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the UK went back on a, on the wrong uh, rate uh, because the debt was so huge. Uh, the debt that uh, the UK had taken on during World War I, that they would have had to devalue uh, the currency in terms of gold, and they didn't. They went to uh, back to the pre-1914 level. Um, and then five years later, in 1931, major crisis in Europe, banking crisis, credit, and Stout collapse, big Austrian bank. And uh, the UK went off the gold standard again. That was 1931. Well, what happened two years later, 1933? Huge banking crisis in the uh, United States. FDR declared a bank holiday for a week where all banks closed and you couldn't take your money out. And by money, I mean gold and silver. And even uh, bank notes, I guess, or deposits. And what did he do as well? Well, he took the U.S. off the gold standard domestically. So two years after the U.K. And then we have to jump uh, forward about 30, 38 years or so, almost 40 years, to the late 60s, early 70s. By then, the U.K. was under the Bretton Woods system. The United States had a kind of gold standard. It wasn't really a pure gold standard since 1944. Foreign governments could redeem their uh, currency, dollar currency reserves uh, for gold at $35 per troy ounce. And uh, the major currencies were, of, of course, fixed versus uh fixed against the dollar. So they were indirectly linked to gold. The UK, though, had uh, devalued or had a devaluation twice since 1944. Uh, once in 1949, I think they devalued from just above $4 per pound to 280. Big devaluation there in 1949. And it stayed at 280 until 1967, 
when Harold Wilson devalued it again to 240. <laughs> and uh, he made a famous uh, address to the British people that uh, it wouldn't really affect them, that the pound in your pocket was still a pound. <laughs> Didn't say that uh, you wouldn't uh, be able to buy as much, of course, because of uh, the debasement of the currency. But uh, as always, politicians are never uh, entirely honest with the public when it comes to money. Uh, so that was 1968. So you jump forward three years this time. So not quite the same as the last time, but three years. And what happens in 1971? Well, uh, the U.S. Um, leaves or um, basically uh, destroys this agreement, Bretton Woods Agreement, as President Nixon is forced. Uh, some might say it was the bankers, and it probably was, forced him to uh, stop convertibility of the dollar into gold uh, for foreign governments or treasuries, and that was a default. And uh, initially the U.S. devalued uh, the currency by raising the price of gold from 35 to 38. Then they tried it again to 42. Uh, and then eventually they just went floating. And uh, yeah, uh, so that started in 1971. And uh, the... Uh, The thing is that the UK both times led the way in not a very good way, right? Um, leaving the gold standard in 1931, devaluing in 1968. So the fact that uh, Philip Swagel, who's the uh, head of the Independent Congressional Budget Office, is now warning here. Uh, that uh, fiscal burden on unprecedented path, says independent congressional budget office head. And he thinks the U.S. could follow the U.K., uh, the example of Liz Truss, uh, even though I don't think uh, Liz Truss is 100% uh, responsible for the crisis in September, October of 2022. So it's not quite two years yet. And I've spoken about that recently, and I'll put the video up in the cards. Uh, there's a lot more to that crisis. But let's quickly go through this article here. U.S. faces a Liz Truss-style market shock if the government ignores the country's ballooning federal debt. The head of Congress's uh, independent fiscal watchdog warned. Philip Swagel, director of the CBO, said the mounting U.S. fiscal burden was on, on, on an unprecedented trajectory, risking a crisis of the kind that sparked a run on the pound and the collapse of Truss's government in the U.K. in 2022. Yes, the pound almost dropped to uh, one to one to the dollar. Yes, now it has recovered. It's at 126. And before I uh, go for, forward here in this article, uh, just wanted to let you know that um, Miles Fra Franklin still has these specials here that I spoke about a few days ago. They've got one tenth of an ounce gold maples, only $35 over melt. And they've got an ounce uh, silver Krugerrands, only $3.10 over spot. And Shekman, of course, is a friend of the channel. He's been on many times. If you're uh, looking to uh, contact them, you can do it uh, via email, info at milesfranklin.com, or you can call them on 1-800-822-8080 and tell them that um, Mario or Maneco64 sent you. Uh, so back to the uh, CBO's warning. Uh, the danger, of course, is what the UK faced with former Prime Minister Truss, where policymakers try to take an action and there's a market reaction uh, to that action, Swagel said in an interview with the Financial Times. The US was not there yet. <laughs> uh, not there yet. Are we there yet? <laughs> uh, he said, but as higher interest rates 
raise the cost of paying its creditors to a trillion in, in 2026, bond markets uh, could snap back. According to the CBO, the U.S. The U.S.'s federal debt pile amounted 26 to 26.2 trillion, or 97 percent of GDP at the end of last year. That seems a lot lower than the one that we look at, uh, the 34.5 trillion. That's because it's only uh, debt owed uh, by uh, owed to the public. That doesn't in include the debt that uh, U.S. government agencies. Uh, like the Fed own. It shot up after sweeping tax cuts by Donald Trump in 2017 and huge stimulus spending during the pandemic. Trump has pledged to renew the tax cuts due to expire next year if he defeats Joe Biden in this year's presidential election. So this chart here says U.S. federal debt is forecast to reach all-time high in 2029. While that is a percentage, as a percentage of GDP, uh, we're reaching all-time highs on a real uh, notional or nominal basis every day. The other thing I would say, GDP uh, counts government spending. So I would say this is a lot worse if you take away government spending from GDP because government spending can only happen when you extract wealth from the private sector. That's a different matter though, but w the reason I'm telling you this is because I think it's a lot worse, the debt situation. Uh, this is Swago here again. We have the potential for some changes that seem modest or maybe start off modest and then get more serious to have outsized effects on interest rates and therefore on the fiscal trajectory. Trust quit uh, after just 45 days as UK Prime Minister after her plan to pay for deep tax cuts with more debt backfired, sending the country's borrowing costs sharply higher. While they're still quite high right now, they haven't really dropped that much since she left. Swagel's remarks to the FT came a day after he, the independent watchdog issued new long-term economic projections which showed debt levels rising to 166% of GDP by 2054. Uh, Fitch stripped the US of its AAA rating last year, citing concerns over a high and growing general government debt. Moody's still rates the US AAA but said last November that it had changed its outlook from stable to negative. What do I think about these ratings? Uh, well, they're, they're overrating the U.S. Uh, unfortunately, all Western countries are more like moving uh, very quickly towards junk. Um, the warnings from the CBO chief come amid fears among economists that years of fiscal profligacy by both Democrats and Republicans are storing up trouble for the U.S. economy. Well, we saw the other day that they <laughs> they passed another 1.2 trillion package, and it doesn't seem to matter that the Republicans have the majority. They always go along or vice versa. It would behove policymakers to reduce deficits substantially, in part because there are big demographic challenges coming down the pike, said Kimberly Clausing, a senior fellow at the Peterson uh, Institute think tank. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, I did want to say here, though, that uh, the CBO forecast deficit hovering around So the CBO also forecast that uh, budget deficits, deficits are going to hover around 6% over the next 10 years. That's huge. Uh, usually 6% uh, deficits are uh, equated to periods of crises, crises and recessions, but that's what they expect for the next 10 years. And you can bet uh, the CBO's forecasts are usually, yeah, they're not really... Uh, correct <laughs> they usually underestimate these things and it says 
and are based on the plan expire of the, the Trump tax cuts in 2025. So the problem is if Trump gets back in, uh, he'll probably uh, reinstate the tax cuts. Am I saying tax cuts are bad? No, but unless you uh, rein in uh, government spending deficits and the size of government, uh, it's not going to do any good. So I think this is serious. And uh, the way the U.S. dollar would devalue would not be uh, against any other currency, uh, national currency that is like the pound did in 2022. It would be against gold. And is it any wonder that gold is uh, where it is right now? Uh, it touched 2200 yesterday. And, and I think uh, it could go a lot higher or the dollar could devalue a lot more. So, and I'm not being uh, political here. I'm just looking at the facts. So just wanted to show you this before we look at what Reagan said about inflation. Uh, growth in the national debt of the United States from 1969 to 2023 by president. So it really stands out that Ronald Reagan uh, grew the national debt the most. Uh, and, and you're going to find this puzzling because of what he said uh, about inflation and the debt. But to me, it just goes to show that um, the uh, bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. is so ingrained, or if you want to call it the deep state or, uh, yeah, whatever, that unless, in my opinion, there's a total collapse of the, the currency, a total collapse of the Washington, D.C. machinery, we're going to continue to see uh, this kind of growth in debt. Yes, it's going to get a lot worse. So what I'm trying to say is that actually a collapse would probably be the best thing that could happen. <laughs> it would be chaotic, uh, of course, but it's going to get chaotic no matter what, because if they're able to keep things going, I think it's going to get a lot worse, just like uh, the CBO said. So I'm going to play now um, this clip of what Reagan said about inflation. Government has only two ways of getting money other than raising taxes. It can go into the money market and borrow, competing with its own citizens and driving up interest rates, which it has done, or it can print money, and it's done that. Both methods are inflationary. We're victims of language. The very word inflation leads us to think of it as just high prices. And then, of course, we resent the person who puts on the price tags forgetting that he or she is also a victim of inflation. Inflation is not just high prices. It's a reduction in the value of our money. When the money supply is increased, but the goods and services available for buying are not, we have too much money chasing too few goods. So there you go. It even sounds that like uh, uh, the stuff that I say about inflation. And despite that... Um as you saw earlier, uh, the national debt increased by 186% under Reagan. And uh, the other thing that happened in the uh, early 80s when Reagan was in power is that uh, the BLS changed the way they calculated inflation. As you can see here from this article in Forbes, Summers, inflation reached 18% in 2022 using the government's previous formula. So it was under Reagan, and I'm not saying Reagan told the BLS to do this. As I said, the bureaucracy is really, really strong. But it says here, most no notably, as Summers and his co-authors, Marion Bohus, Judd Kramer, and Carl Schultz point out, in 1983, the BLS eliminated interest costs from its calculation of consumer price uh, inflation uh, so there you go. Um, what I'm trying to say here, even if you think uh, Trump is going to do a lot of good to the economy, and he might, I think the debt and the deficits and the inflation is a lot more important. And don't forget, in uh, Trump's last year in office, the budget deficit was running almost at 6%. It was around 5%. And all the COVID uh, massive deficit spending and money printing from the Fed started actually in 2020. And I know uh, 
President Biden uh, has done a lot of uh, deficit spending, but he's not the only one to blame. Uh, so let's quickly look at where the markets are then this morning. It's uh, 8.25 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 21.81. The high overnight was uh, 21.83 and the low 73. Yes, uh, yesterday we got up to 2200, but we've corrected back. Silver hasn't really gone anywhere. It's unchanged at 24.45. The Dow futures is up 148 points. The Nasdaq is up 71. S&P is up about 20 points. The currencies are pretty much unchanged. Uh, WTI crude is down about a percent. It's back below 81. Uh, Brent as well is down uh, just under a percent and it's back below 85. What about cocoa? Well, <laughs> cocoa uh, closed yesterday above $9,000 per a ton at 9,300. So it's still uh, moving up like a rocket. Uh, platinum uh, is unchanged, trading around 904. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.